We're here again in the beautiful YouTube space New York, in a studio filled with lights and camera, and now some action. This particular action is going to be talking about how computers can help countries get along a little better. Today we're going to talk about machine translation, and how it doesn't go so well in the early days. <laughs> ah, the 80s. Well known for great fashion sense, bad guys with cheesy Russian accents, and fears of nuclear annihilation. Maybe it's the coder in me, but I have actually always wondered if the Cold War would have been a bit, well, you know, warmer, if computers could have helped us understand each other. It turns out we tried just that. Welcome to CompChomp, the only show on the internet where there's something colder than a Russian winter. Let me take you back in time to lovely 1948. Computers were a thing, a, a new thing, a big room-sized thing that you had to feed with little tiny paper-punched holes. These binary loving behemoths were so successful that folks actually started wondering if there was any problem they couldn't solve. And one of those folks that definitely couldn't ignore their power was Mr. Warren Weaver. Fear the mighty power of the computer! He kept bugging all of his colleagues. Hey guys, you know what, you know what computers should be doing? Guys, guys, my, my idea about computers in Russian. And they're like, dude, Weaver, we have told you a million times. You need to stop bothering us and just write this stupid Russian thing down. He sat down and he wrote the very first memo on computer translation. And it really got the ball rolling. First, UCLA and Georgetown got on board, and then MIT followed in 1951 by giving Yehoshua Bar Hillel the position of full-time professional machine translation man, the first in the business. Then, in 1954, IBM and Georgetown staged the first public demo of machine translation, 49 whole Russian sentences. The crowd went wild. MT was the next big thing. So, how did they do it? Well, they started with a Russian sentence and they broke it into its dictionary chunks. Uh, you know, word and word pieces like suffixes and roots. Then they applied one of just six rules to the chunks. For example, here's the first rule. No, no, wait. We are programmers. We count from zero. So this is the zeroth rule. A word was associated with a code, 110, and that code told the machine to go back and look at the last full word. And when it found that last word, it had to check that word for another code, 21. And if that word came up 21s, the machine placed it after the first word. Now, I know that sounds like a whole bunch of steps, but the result was pretty simple. You take two words and you switch them. With only a fistful of rules like this, the machine translated amazing sentences like, <clears throat> Magnitude of angle is determined by the relation of length of arc to radius. And the price of potatoes is determined by the demand. Potatoes? Really, machine? Culturally sensitive much? In spite of that, the uh, journalists were impressed, and the public, they were stunned. In a world that had never seen computer smarts like this, this was magic. But uh, if you peer behind that curtain a little bit, things start to feel a tiny bit less magical. The sentences had all been carefully selected. Everything was transliterated from Cyrillic into the Latin alphabet. And grammatically, sentences included only third-person verbs and avoided any negations or questions. Sometimes, things that we would think of as grammar or syntax were stored as part of the dictionary entries. And uh, that last one is actually pretty cheap. Think about it. This machine associates each Russian word with up to two dictionary entries. So there's a word that translates to relation. But if you look at the second English choice, it's the relation. Instead of figuring out a way to train the computer to understand English articles, they just shove the word the in as part of another dictionary choice. So yeah, they were doing a little bit of cheating, but I only cheated a little bit. But it did not matter to the public. People were really excited, and if you were a translating machine, the times were good. For now. Because when we return to wrap up this story, things start to get ugly. The nerds are gonna be fighting over how computers should be translating and the public starts making a mockery of grammar and the very existence of machine translation will hang in the balance. Chomp.